Mike Avery's Outdoor Magazine is brought to you in part by Darton Archery. I'm working on a show for the Outdoor Magazine television show involving some very special video. Some video that I found in a box that was shot back in 1985 at the Grouse Haven Lodge, the Grouse Haven Hunting Camp near Rose City, Michigan. And the video is of an interview I did with Fred Bear. In 1985, we got invited to Grouse Haven to videotape Fred Bear as he was 83 years old at the time, about two and a half years from when he died. He was 83 years old. And the folks at Bear Archery wanted us to get some, some documentation of Fred's stories, of his life. And we did that. And when we were done with their stuff, we took him aside and we shot an interview for us. So there I am in 1985, a young, skinny, still dark-haired kid interviewing Fred Bear. And, and, and even to this day, it's hard for me to call him Fred Bear. I mean, I was in such awe. I almost feel like even now I should say Mr. Bear. Because he was an archery pioneer, as we all know. But to sit down and get a chance to talk with him and get it all on videotape and to find it now, it's just absolutely phenomenal. The first thing I ask him is, are you the world's greatest bow hunter? Well, it's really not true. The world's greatest bow hunter is a fellow by the name of Ed Bilderback. Yeah. Who lives in Alaska. <laughs> why, 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 why aren't you the world's greatest bow hunter? Well, um... Uh, He's a better shot than I am, and he's a better hunter. <laughs> he's lived and he grew up in the woods. Yeah. Yeah, I was, you know, I always went hunting, but I didn't spend all my time in the woods. Yeah. You've no. done all right, though. Well, I've done real well. Yeah, I guess I've gotten a lot more publicity than Ed has. He's a good friend of mine, and he doesn't want publicity because that's none of his business. So I came back and said, yeah, but Fred, you have, you have five world records. You've traveled the world bow hunting. You, you've hunted almost everything. You've got five world records. Oh, yeah. I had polar bear, elephant, cape buffalo, uh, all the big ones. Yeah. yeah. Never got a leopard and never got a rhino. I said, Fred, you have traveled the world hunting every kind of exotic animal we can think of. What's your favorite animal? The deer is the uh, sharpest of all animals, the smartest of all animals, mm -hmm. to a hunter. Yeah. And much more so to the bull hunter. Fred was originally a Michigan guy. We have a strong connection to him here in Michigan. And we think of him as a bow hunter, obviously. But I was interested to find out when, when I was talking with him that, that he wasn't always a bow hunter. In fact, he started out deer hunting with a gun. Well, uh, you see, I began earlier in 1933. Uh, the bow hunters then, you could count on your fingers and toes in Michigan. And, uh, but uh, I grew up as a gun hunter. My dad was a hunter. And I shot a deer in 1933 up in the Upper Peninsula. It dressed 285 pounds, biggest deer I ever saw. And it was so easy. Uh, opening morning, I walked up and draw. And there he was looking at me, and I looked at him, and I shot him and went down. And that's when the work began. Yeah. 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 So I thought this would be a little bit better, and this is a good sporting way. You get pretty hungry doing it sometimes, but. Uh, it works out all right. Bow hunting has changed so much since when well, you started. Well, yes, and you can learn more about hunting deer with a bow and arrow uh, in a week than a, a gun hunter might <laughs> learn all his life. Really? Well, if you see a deer, if you're hunting with a gun, there's nothing, nothing wrong with a gun. I don't run it down, but uh, it, it's uh, a lot easier. And if, when you see a deer with a gun, you can usually shoot it. When you see a deer with a bow, you're faced with the job of getting closer. You have to do a real good Indian job, and that takes a lot of doing. I had another question for him. Uh, this one about his efforts to promote archery and bow hunting. Now, he was a pioneer. He was the man who, who took archery from this little niche sport, bow hunting from this little niche sport, and tried to take it mainstream and did a pretty good job of it. And one of the things he did was by uh, producing hunting films. 
He was one of the first guys to do this. There was no Sportsman Channel at the time. There was none of this other stuff. But Fred Bear went out and, and did hunts and got him on film. I said, what was that like? Yeah, I've made a lot of films uh, of shooting animals. And, um, well, I did one myself before I could afford a photographer. But after I could afford a photographer, it got kind of expensive. And uh, I got to kill something. Uh, if I go on a hunt, I have to kill something, see? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm so concerned about that and so worked out about the details, where the cameraman is and where he's, he's going to get it and what the light's like and the whole mm -hmm. darn thing, that I don't have time to get scared. Yeah. <laughs> That's really the way it works out. Bear Archery ended up being, at the time, the biggest archery company in the world. And I was curious, how did it all get started? And I was running a plant for a fellow in Detroit during a depression, terrible depression of 29, 33. And uh, he wasn't doing so well, and his place caught fire. The insurance company owned it, and I was out of a job. Mm -hmm. So um, he had a, a nephew in there, been there about a year, fresh out of Dartmouth, who uh, uh, came in the selling capacity, and he made friends with the uh, Chrysler. We were doing automobile work. In the beginning, nobody could live off, the, off of the, the archery mm -hmm. thing. We were making advertising materials, the same business at where I was running the plant. So I got a hold of him, and I said, Chuck, uh, you know, you can get the orders for this stuff, and I know how to make it. Why don't we form a partnership and get back in business? And that was in 33. Yeah. Well, he, uh, he didn't have any money, and I didn't either, really. Uh, he borrowed, We took inventory of my equipment I had in my basement. It came $600, and he borrowed $600 from his mother, <laughs> and that was the beginning of this whole thing. The funny thing is, after talking with uh, Fred, it became clear to me that he had turned his passion into his job. I said, did you ever get sick of it? No, normally you turn your hobby into a business and it becomes a chore, but this never had. No, I still, you know, I should be lolling in the sun, I guess, down the beach right now, but I love it, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm still working there. My title's chairman. I, don't, I never did find out what that means, but... <laughs> <laughs> But of all the interviews I've done, the hundreds of interviews over the years, I can honestly say that that one interview with Fred Bear at Grouse Haven in Michigan in 1985 probably had the biggest impact on me of any interview I've ever done. Maybe it was because, again, I was a young kid in awe. Maybe it's because his passion also became my passion. Maybe it's because he was such a kind man, such a soft-spoken man, such a seemingly gentle man, and yet he was able to almost single-handedly form what we have today in modern-day archery. And when I look back at that old videotape, I have to smile.